This is a picture test in practical anatomy of the reproductive system. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, I will allow two seconds of pause for each picture before starting to comment so that you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then you can replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the bony pelvis. Name the projecting part indicated by the curve marked A. So this is a sacrum and the first sacral segment, the prominent upper part of the first sacral segment is called the promontory of the sacrum. So this is the sacral promontory. Surface B on the lateral aspect, this is called the auricular surface. This is the boundary of the surface. And this is the surface where it articulates, the sacrum articulates with the uh, ilium at the sacroiliac joint. Identify the notch, name the muscle that passes through it. Here, the notch A is the greater sciatic notch, and the notch B is the lesser sciatic notch. And uh, you can see that the boundary between the greater and lesser sciatic notch is the ischial spine and here these notches are converted into foramina because of the presence of two ligaments the sacrospinous and the sacrotuberous ligaments so they convert the uh, notches into foramina greater sciatic foramen and lesser sciatic uh, foramen the greater sciatic foramen is a gateway between the pelvis and the gluteal region. The muscle that passes through it is the piriformis muscle, while the lesser sciatic notch is a gateway between the perineum and the gluteal region, and the muscle that passes through it is the obturator internus muscle. What is the variation shown in this sacrum? Uh, here you can look at the sacral foramina. Usually the sacrum is formed by fusion of five pieces, so in between them there are four sacral foramina. But here, you can see that there is another sacral foramen, a fifth sacral foramen, which means that there is another piece that has been added to the sacrum, and this is the fifth lumbar vertebra has fused with the sacrum, and this is what we call sacralization of the fifth lumbar vertebra. Identify the ligaments 1 to 3. Ligament 1 extends between the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle here, and this is the inguinal ligament. In fact, this ligament is the inferior free border of the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle. The other ligaments, ligament 2 and 3, ligament 3 extending from the ischial spine into the sacrum. So it is the sacrospinous ligament. Okay, And uh, on its inner surface lies the coccygeus muscle while um, uh, ligament 2 is the bigger ligament and extends between the sacrum and the tuberosity of the ischium. Here, the uh, ischial tuberosity is not shown, so the ligament 2 is the sacrotuberous ligament, extending between the sacrum and the tuberosity, sacrotuberous. The one that extends between the sacrum and the spine is the sacrospinous. And you can see here that these two ligaments, they convert the notches the notch that is below the spine, the lesser sciatic notch, into a foramen, and the notch that is above the spine, the greater sciatic notch, uh, into a foramen, the greater sciatic foramen. Name the artery whose root is indicated by the blue pointers. What is its origin? The artery here leaves the pelvis through the greater sciatic notch and is related to the ischial spine in the gluteal region, and then it leaves the gluteal region to enter into the perineum, and this is the internal pudendal artery. It arises from the anterior division of the internal iliac artery in the pelvis. Which nerve passes through the foramen indicated by the yellow pointer? The nerve here that passes through the obturator foramen. In fact, the obturator foramen is closed by uh, obturator membrane and by the obturator internus from inside and obturator externus muscle from outside but there is a small canal here which is called the obturator canal that is still open and allows the passage of a nerve and vessel neurovascular bundle obturator nerve and vessels the nerve is a branch of the lumbar plexus 
and the vessel is a branch of the internal iliac artery. Which pelvis A or B is a male pelvis? Now, if you look uh, directly at the subpubic angle, you will see here that the subpubic angle is almost a wide arch, while here it is a narrow arch. So this is described as a Gothic arch, or it is the angle between the subpubic angle between the index and middle finger, that is the male pelvis, and here it is the Roman arch, curved arch, and it's the angle between the index and thumb, the subpubic angle here. This is a female pelvis. A is the female pelvis. A female pelvis should be wider and shallower uh, so that to accommodate for childbearing and childbirth, while a male pelvis is uh, narrower and deeper. And this is uh, indicated clearly by the shape of the angles, the subpubic angles. Wider female pelvis with a wider subpubic angle and a, a narrower male pelvis with a narrow subpubic angle. This width of the pelvis is also reflected on the shape of the obturator foramen. You can see here the obturator foramen is almost a triangular in the female because it has been uh, pulled by the width of the pelvis, while in the, in the male which has a narrow and deep pelvis, it is the obturator foramen is oval. So these are obvious reasons why A is a female pelvis and B is a male pelvis. Identify the interrupted line A, give the complete name of the cavity located inferior to it. So this interrupted line is called the linea terminalis and it is uh, formed by the pectineal line of the pubis and the arcuate line of the ilium. It constitutes part of the pelvic brim. The pelvic brim separates between the false pelvis above, which is part of abdominal cavity, and the true pelvis below. So the cavity below is called the true pelvic cavity or the pelvis minor or the obstetric pelvis. The bony prominence B is the ischial spine. Name the foramen located at the tip of the yellow pointer. This is a foramen in the sacrum. It's the anterior sacral foramen. So there are four of these foramina usually, four of these anterior uh, sacral foramina. They allow the passage of nerves of the sacral plexus and vessels from the uh, lateral sacral artery to uh, supply the contents of the canal, uh, sacral canal inside the sacrum. B, identify the ligament indicated by the blue pointer. This ligament extends between the ischial spine and the sacrum, so it is the sacrospinous ligament. The other ligament here, which extends from the sacrum to the tuberosity of the ischium, is the sacrotuberous ligament.